Welcome to the Video Lab Live Show, your interactive live stream about video specific marketing and online video content. I want to ask you this. All right. I want to ask you this. Do you feel like your videos are not resonating with people? Maybe your views and your engagement seem a little low. Well, I wonder, I wonder, are you making the right type of videos for the right type of people? Just think about that for a sec. Today, I have Sarah Kurtenbach on the show, founder of Move Her Money, which is financial education for Gen Z females. Most of her education platform revolves around video content. Now, now, did you notice anything about my past couple of sentences? I'm going to say them again. Today, I have Sarah Kurtenbach on the show, founder of Move Her Money, which is financial education for Gen Z females. Most of our education platform revolves around video content. Let me know in the comments if you noticed anything about what I just said. Okay, let me know down in the comments. Did you notice anything? I'll explain why I'm making such a big deal about this in just a little bit. Remember, this live show is interactive, which means at any point you can jump into the comments or the chat, bring your questions or your input to the show. And let's just get started warming that chat up just a little bit. If you are watching right now, how about you get your fingers warmed up, go into the chat, just say hi. First of all, say hi, and let me know where you're watching from. So jump into the chat, say hi, and let me know where you're watching from. Now, I'm excited about this episode because we get to hear from Sarah, who has over 13 years of experience working in technology, social media, and influencer marketing. She was a VP of a Fortune 500 media company in Atlanta and New York City. She brings a ton of insight and knowledge to this online platform and that we're all trying to figure out, okay? We're all trying to figure this thing out. She brings a ton of knowledge and insight to, to our online platforms. All right. We got some people jumping into the chat. Welcome to the live stream. AgriGrowth Consulting. Matt, I know that's you. You painted a good picture of who her customer actually is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of going back to, you know, the very beginning of my little intro there. I think you're catching on, Matt. I think you're catching on. Jamie, welcome. Watch from Pierre. Welcome to the live stream. Frederick, so good to see you from Louisville. Lou, not Louisville, Louisville. I learned that when I was looking at a school in Kentucky and I almost, almost went there to Louisville, Louisville. Well, if you're a business owner, solopreneur, or anyone trying to use video content as a way to grow your business, listen to Sarah today, because I 100% believe that what we talk about today could be the changing point for how you approach your video marketing and online video content. I'm making a very big deal about this, I know. But towards the end of this episode, Sarah is gonna give her one thing. If you don't get anything else from this whole entire episode, Sarah's one thing is something you're not gonna wanna miss. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Caleb. I'm a video educator and video creator and founder of The Video Lab, which is fully video education, like this show is fully video education. I also just launched the online community this past week, and there's workshops and everything in there. The Video Lab is also fully video production for social media video and website videos, and then a video studio for content creators who need to make simple, quick turnaround video content, you know, talking head videos, training videos, anything like that you can do here in the studio. So make sure you follow and subscribe to the Video Lab. All the links are down in the description. I've been doing freelance video production since 2012 in South Dakota, and I also have a personal YouTube channel other than the Video Lab. And if you just go into YouTube and, you know, type my name in, Caleb Hoover, my channel should pop up. I started uploading video content during the pandemic about the cameras that I use. So right here, these cameras that, that we'll be using today as go through settings and um, best ways to use it. And that channel has grown to around 24,000 subscribers. So I've worked and traveled with brands from around the world making video content. So I started this live stream, the Video Lab live show. I just need to make sure all my platforms are running here. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I have to monitor a lot of stuff going on here started this live stream, the Video Lab live show, as a mostly weekly interactive live show streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn to help you harness the power, I'm gonna make a fist, the power of online video with video specific marketing tips, tricks, and trends. And I really hope this show brings some value to you and provides things that you can incorporate into your video workflow like right away. 
like right after this episode. Now, if you're just joining the stream, we're getting warmed up here. I've got Sarah on the show today, founder of Move Her Money. And we're talking about her passion to educate young females about finances and how she uses video to accomplish that goal. If you have any questions for Sarah about how she uses video, put those into the chat and we'll answer those live on air. Now, I do have a little disclaimer before we get into this conversation. Disclaimers are good. This episode is just a way to show you some possibilities that you have with video, but it doesn't necessarily mean everything's going to work like magic for you. It does require a ton of hard work, consistency, strategy, and possibly even partnering with professionals like Sarah or myself to get the results that you hope for. And with that being said, how about maybe you put some uh, clap hand emojis <laughs> into the chat and let's bring in Sarah. And this guest intro is sponsored by The Breaks Coffee. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Caleb. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so good to have you on the episode. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about Move Her Money. Like what is going on with Move Her Money? Yes, so Move Her Money is online curriculum and an educational program. Yeah all geared to teach Gen Z girls about money, what they need to know in this stage yeah. of life, what they should avoid, the things that they should do, and the things that they may not learn in school mm. or they may not learn at home, but they desperately need to know. Because if yeah. there's one thing we're going to use the rest of our life until the day we die, it's money. Uh, so yes. we better learn to use it well. Whether we have some or not. Exactly. We're, we're going to have to Hopefully use it. Hopefully we have some. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so um, what what made you go this route? Like what, why? Move yes. From? So my previous experience, um, as you mentioned, yep. was working with a Facebook tech company. Yeah. And then after that, I started my own consulting company, okay. where for eight years, I consulted with mainly technology startups or brands in regards to their social media ads or influencer marketing. Okay. So that was my whole background. Yeah. I felt for a while that while I was good at that, mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily my purpose okay. or even my passion. But I didn't exactly know what that was right. at the time. <laughs> yeah. So then kind of two key things happened. One key thing is I had a major client I was working with four days a week okay. and they had an all hands on deck meeting on a Friday and told us that effective of 5 p.m. that day, they oh. were shutting the company down. Oh my! None of us saw it coming. What? So I lost a major client oh, and I had time on my hands yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. And usually what I would do is go find another client. Yeah. But I really felt like I needed to just press pause and just like do some internal listening mm. um, and really listen to God and where are you directing me right yeah. now? So I, I, I pushed pause on that first of all. So first of all, I was like forced yeah. into thinking of something different. Yep. The other thing then is around that same time was when the news first came out that the government was going to start forgiving student loans and be oh. hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. Yes. And I agree student loans like are a crisis. Mm. But what I couldn't wrap my head around is thinking, why are we spending so much money to forgive student loans, but we're not teaching the yeah. next generations how not to avoid the same mistakes that we've done? Because oh, wow. if we don't teach yeah. the next generations, we're actually not going to help anything. We're not going to help make our country better. We're not going to help make the economy better. Somebody has to teach them. And if we can't rely on anyone else, then maybe I should be the voice. Wow. Yeah. So I just really felt that I should be the voice. And I wanted to cater towards Gen Z girls, yeah. really mainly girls in kind of high school, college yep. age. I've always had a passion for that age of girls. I've been a mentor to girls that yeah. age for a long time. Awesome. And also I have a passion for money and finances. So I'm like, hey, I could talk about this all day. Let's talk about it to the girls. Yeah, excellent. So that's how it came about. No, I, I love I love the passion. Like you can tell like this is a purpose right yes, here. <laughs> I, sure. love, I love how that comes through. <laughs> now, um, if you have any questions for Sarah or anything about video content, make sure you jump into the chat and place those questions in there and we'd be more than happy to answer those. Now I have a question for you. Yes. Are you a coffee drinker? I drink one cup of coffee a day. Okay. So I'm a morning coffee drinker. So you already had your coffee. Yes. So you technically are drinking water in your mug. We're not going to yes. tell anybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we just told everybody. Oh, we just told everybody. <laughs> but this little segment is sponsored by the Breaks Coffee. I'm just going to hold my mug up here. Breaks Coffee. Today we're drinking the Absolute Blend from the breaks it it is brewed right here in the office and it smells great oh it smells so good tastes great and you can order it online i'm going to toss this qr code up here this is what we're drinking absolute blend you can go to the breaks coffee roasting.com and order it there or use this qr code and order it there um makes a great gift 
Actually, the first thing I noticed when I walked into your studio was yep. how it smelled so good. Oh, you yeah. were just brewing the coffee. Yeah. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, you know, it's going to be a good show yeah. when the coffee's brewing yeah. and everything <laughs> smells good. So it's so true. Yeah. Makes a difference. All right. Thank you, Breaks, <laughs> for sponsoring the guest intro. I'm going to punch these cameras in, Sarah. Okay. And there we go. So at the beginning of this episode, I asked people what they noticed about how I introduced you. Mm -hmm. There's still time to toss that into the chat if you want. Um, I I got very pretty specific. And I mean, it was only a couple sentences, but I got very specific. Um, what I like about this is you know who you're targeting. Right. Very specifically. Can you tell us about your audience and your target viewer or maybe your customer, that type of thing? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And my business is a little unique because I create my content for one customer, yeah. which is Gen Z girls, kind of high school, college age girls. But yet I sell my products usually to their parents. Okay. So that's like a whole yeah. different kind of marketing standpoint. And yep. there's definitely still things I'm learning in the, from that because it's almost like two different avatars. Yeah. But I really wanted to focus specifically on that age range of girls yeah. and for a couple of different reasons. So one thing is the the world of finance is huge, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, there's people, a lot of components. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like, it's like if, you know, hey, do you want to come and talk about marketing? It's mm. like, well, what form of marketing? Yes. Because there's a million different types of marketing. Totally. And same with finance, right? There's a million different types of finance. Yep. So I knew, and I also knew I didn't want to be the like manager of people's portfolios. Yeah. I didn't want to become a certified financial planner, yeah. but I love educating and I love teaching mm. and I love focusing on that age segment of girls. Yeah. So that's how it all kind of came around too, to thinking like, man, maybe I could be the one to just really speak into girls right. in this age when it comes to money and what they should do, what they shouldn't do and how they should handle their money. Yeah. Um, Matt brings up this question. Um, did you start out with that demographic or did it kind of evolve over yeah. time? So um, for me, I actually started out with that demographic. I love this question. Um, and the reason how why that demographic started out is because when I started to think like, man, I maybe maybe I should talk about money. Maybe I should help to be an educator about money. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones where I had parents who did an amazing job teaching me about money. Mm. I had a lot of friends who didn't have that growing up. And so I just saw how we handled money very differently. Yeah. And it really opened my eyes to, wow, if like children or girls can learn about money at a younger age, how it can really impact their future mm. and what they choose to do, how they choose to spend money, how they choose to invest money, what they look for in a future spouse. Like, yeah. honestly, there's so many things that come into play there. Um, and so I knew at the beginning, I really wanted to talk to high school and college yep. girls, also really getting down into the details of that. When I started looking into financial education, if you want to talk to people that are ages 13 and under, there's all these SEC oh, regulations okay. and red tape. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't even want to hand go through yes, that. Right. right? Totally. Um, if it's ages 14 up, there's a, a whole plethora of things you don't have to worry about. The other thing that I really like about the age of Gen Z girls is they're at the age where they crave responsibility okay. and they crave independence, but they still need to be taught. And not all, but most are actually pretty <laughs> hungry to learn. Excellent. Like most are like cool. pretty hungry to learn about the right ways to handle yeah. money because they have big dreams. They have big aspirations. And so they are craving independence. They're craving responsibility. They're hungry to learn. And yep. that's the age where as a parent, you can also start letting them that's be awesome. able to handle money yeah, on their own too. That's so good. Now, if you haven't caught on already, if you're watching this, if you haven't caught on already, Sarah, what are we actually talking about yeah, right here? We're talking about really niching down yeah. in your business. And I guess the, the question that we all have to answer, is it niche or is it niche? I know. <laughs> and honestly, so this is so funny. Before I came on today, yeah. I did some research on yep. it and there's no right or wrong way. Yeah. It's niche or it's niche. <laughs> so I actually say both. So yeah, I'm yeah. going to say both. I don't know what's going to come we're, out of my mouth today. Yeah, so. we're going to use both terms. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll keep it fresh yep. for sure. <laughs> okay. So um, we hear this all the time, like with content. I mean, everything, right? Like everything is like niche down, mm -hmm. niche down. Like what, explain it to me like I am a fifth grader. Like, yeah. What does niching down actually mean? Yes. So niching down means taking a 
bigger, broader view yeah. on something and now focusing on either a certain area that, that you are very passionate about mm. or that people maybe come to you for questions. Yeah. If they're like, if they're like, wow, like I, I got this new camera. Um, it's a Panasonic camera. I don't know yep. how to use it. Maybe I should ask Caleb yeah. or like, I actually have a question about money for my teenage girl. Maybe I should ask Sarah. Yep. So if someone is coming to you naturally with questions in yeah. that area, then that means niching down. I like how you said, explain it to me like a fifth grader. So yeah. I'll even put it this way because yes. a lot of fifth grade boys love football, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? They're That's all true. like my, my homies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so your passion is football. Yeah. Okay. Football is a big, it, it's a niche of yes. a sport, but it is still a big, huge, yep. broad target, right? 100%. So if you want to be a football player in middle school and high school and college, now you have to niche down. Mm. Are you good at throwing? Yeah. Are you good at catching? Are you fast? Are you good at tackling? Mm. Do you want to be a coach? Yep. Like, you know, there's all of these things. So now you think about it as a fifth grader. You love football. Yeah. Now let's focus on what you're naturally passionate about, what you're naturally good at. Yep. And then that can be your niche in this bigger audience. Wow, that's so good. Um, I love just the concept of like, like, um, how do I put it? It's like what? It's just, it's clarity, right? Yes. Like that's what yeah. it is, is clarity. And I think that is so important when it comes to your video content, especially video content. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what this whole show ro revolves around. So that's where yeah. we're going to go. But like just everything in general, it's like just creates this like path moving forward. Yeah. And for you, Gen Z females, their parents, Gen Z females, that's your path. Right. I love that. Right. And the other thing too is that um, sometimes people have the mentality of, well, if I niche down too much, I'm, there's not enough money in yeah. it or there's not a big enough audience. Yep. But there's actually audiences and money to be made in so many mm. niches. You should see how many random niches there are out there. Like it's <laughs> kind of amazing. I'm like, people make money doing yes. that. Who knew? Yes, there's um, a lot. And the, the other thing too is there, if you can just focus on one key thing, one key audience yeah. and find success there, you can always scale out. Yeah, That's totally. the thing. People yep. ask me all the time. They're like, okay, so your company's called Move Her Money. You focus yep. on Gen Z girls, but the boys need to learn mm -hmm. too. The boys need to learn about money. That's one of my number one questions. Yep. And I agree. Totally. I'm like, the boys need totally. to learn about money. But right now, that's not my focus, yeah. right? In yeah. the future, could I expand? Of course I could. Absolutely. But this is going to be what I focus on right now. Now, this I was going to bring this up later, but I think we'll bring it up right now. Like you mentioned like being too specific. Mm -hmm. Can you get too specific? Yeah. Like, is is that a possibility? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that potentially, yes. And the reason why I say that is because back when I was a, a consultant and mm -hmm. I would run social media ads for people, yep. actually a good way to gauge how big your audience is to look at the um, ads platform okay. and the demographic insights. Gotcha. Because sometimes people would be like, I want to target like these people that live here and they're these ages and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I'd be like, that's only like a hundred people, <laughs> right. you know, or they'd be like, yeah. we just want to focus on like this little email list. I'm like, that's like 20 people, yeah. you know? Um, so I mean, sometimes, but like, for, for example, I'm a part of this business community on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And there are, there is a couple who have built this business and they make bank <laughs> and what they focus on is adult ballet dancers. No way. I'm like, what? who knew that there was all these adults yeah. dancing ballet and right. they are like incredible incredibly successful with this business. Wow. So also it's yep. just that really blew my mind yeah. because that's their niche. And I'm like, wow, Stick that's amazing. It. Stick to it. They're having massive success. At um, it, so question about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not interested in joining that, but is it like courses or like, what is it? Okay. Most of it is courses. Okay. I Mo gotcha. Yep. Yep. Most of it is courses and online trainings. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now um, let's get into just a little bit of like the types of content that you specifically are making. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you walk us through some of those things? Like I see you on social media, right? So yeah. I see some of this. Take us into that world of Sarah and Move Her Money. Totally. So the Move Her Money curriculum is an online course that has a ton of videos to it. Yep. And how I purposely created the videos was to be short TikTok style. Gotcha. Because one of the other things is this is how girls this age like to learn. Yep. They don't want to sit down and watch a 30 minute video mm. because they zone out right away. I mean, even as an adult, I do that too sometimes. Yeah. If I turn on a video, it's going to be like, 
20, 30, 40, 50 minutes long. I'm like doing other things. I get distracted. So I purposely wanted to create it super short, snackable so content, good. So good. TikTok style, yep. right to the point, Yeah, you know? 100%. So I'll, I'll do, it's like a two minute video, yeah. right? A two minute video teaching a girl a core concept about savings. So and good. then when she's done watching that video, she has to click complete yep. on her phone or her laptop or her iPad and then go to the next lesson. So yeah. she's constantly engaged. Yeah. She can't set it down and zone out. So that's the course. So that's the awesome. course is like yeah. super short content like that. And then when it comes to what I'm doing on social media, I'm mainly on Instagram and TikTok because okay. that's where the girls are. Yep. Um, and so most of what I do is, yeah, super short videos as well. Yeah. So it, sometimes it's like a 15 second video of me like literally putting on my shoes and getting ready to walk on the door, out the door with like text yeah. overlay. Yep. Sometimes it's um, 90 seconds of me teaching something, whether it's a high yield savings account or what's happening in the investing world yeah. and things like that too. But it's almost never, ever over 90 seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, um, if you have any questions for Sarah, make sure you put them in the chat. We'd love to talk about those. I have a question yeah. about, um, what do you decide to like put behind a paywall compared to what you would put out just on social media? Yeah. Like what you would put behind something that the person yeah. would have to pay for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say that when it comes to putting together something ha that someone has to pay for, it can't just be like a random 90 second video. Yeah. There literally has to be a flow tied mm. to it. Cause people have asked me too, they're like, why would I pay for this if my daughter can just go on YouTube right. and type personal finance and find totally. it herself? Yep. And haven't we all done that? Yeah. We've all gone to YouTube and oh, Google yeah. to search all sorts of random things. Every day. But as we know, when we find things, there's no order to it. Right. Right. Yeah. It's random things here. It could be a, it could be like a 20 second mm. video here. It could be a 30 minute video here yeah. there's no flow there's no rhythm you don't know if you're missing no. something or if you're watching the same thing four times yeah so when it comes to having uh something that someone has to pay for at least for me it is not for a one video it's for a full-fledged course or a program or a mini course gotcha. that takes girls from the beginning of learning something to the end of learning something Love with it. nothing missing yeah. and a flow that they like learning in totally too. Mm -hmm. um i like what really sticks out to me about what you're doing is just like you are providing that in a way that they're already consuming content. Right. And yeah. That is so huge. I don't know, you know, for people watching, like whatever niche or industry you're in, like how are people consuming that content? Like yeah. that is huge. I mean, even to the point where you're making your coursework, like that's how they're consuming content. So let's structure our courses yeah. that same way. Um, so even before I built Move Her Money, I took this course called Nail Your Niche. Yeah, I love it's, it. it's great, right? <laughs> and one of the things that they challenge you in there is when it comes to like finding your niche and mm -hmm. how to talk to them, they say, what do they already want? Yeah. Like, right. what does your consumer already want? Yeah. And when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, like girls they want to be able to afford afford to take a trip with their friends yeah. and they want to be able to afford a nice apartment, whether mm. it's in college or out of college, but they don't want to be in debt forever. They want to be independent with their money. And then when it comes to parents, it's like parents want to be able to have the security and yeah. the comfort of knowing that their daughter's smart with her money. Right. So you, you also have to think like, what do they already want yeah. in life that they just may be willing to pay for now? Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Let's ex expand on that just a little bit because I wanted, I wanted to, you know, if somebody's watching this, you know, they're maybe a business owner or, you know, a solopreneur or um, they're part of an internal marketing team. Maybe, yeah. You know, like how do we know what our, our niche is? Like, how do we find that? How, like, who are the people, like, what are some, maybe some steps that you've gone through or like yeah. just some insight into like, how do we know who they are? Totally. So just like most things in life, it's going to take some testing, right? Yeah. Um, we've talked about this a little bit, but the two, like two key questions to just ask yourself from the very beginning is what am I already passionate about? Like almost mm. think of it this way. There's things in life that are energy givers yeah. and energy takers, yep. right? Totally. So sometimes if you're doing a certain project, when you're done with that, you're like, I need a nap. <laughs> I'm <laughs> exhausted. That's an energy taker. <laughs> right. But then you do things where you're like, I could do this for hours on yeah. end, or I could talk about this. Yep. Like if I'm meeting someone for dinner, they're, if they're like, ooh, they start on this topic. You're like, I could talk all night about this baby. You know, <laughs> totally. that's an energy giver. You're yep. passionate about that. And then the second thing is, what are people seeking advice from you mm. from? 
Yeah. And if you start kind of putting those two things together, it could help you to eventually find what, what your niche is that you also enjoy. Right. That's the thing, you yeah. know, like you might actually uncover this amazing niche that could yeah. be a moneymaker, but it sucks the soul right out yeah, of you. Yeah, totally. Or you just don't enjoy yeah. doing that. And then that's right. not fun either. Yeah. And then people can see through that too in the end. So it, You know, the, the video live come like revolves around this whole concept too, right? Yeah. Like it's a lot of like commonly asked questions that I got all the time. Like I just wanted to put them all in one place. Yeah. Right. That's kind of like how the concept of the video lab was born. It's like just all these questions come to one place to get all those answers. Right. I mean, even if it's like something you're making videos on your own, like here's some help on how to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so um when it when it comes down to it, it's like what are frequently asked questions you're getting? Answer those, you know, with the actual content that you're making. And with within that, like you might actually start discovering, like you start making content, you might actually start like, oh, you know what? Totally. My niche is actually going this direction. Yes. And it, I love answering these things. Yes. <laughs> and also keep in mind too, this doesn't mean you're going to be, you You may not be like stuck in this niche right. the rest of your life. Totally. Almost think of it as two to five years. Yeah. Like you could, if this is, you know, potentially working for you, if you're really passionate about it, you could be in here for two to five years and then you could pivot because who yeah. knows what's going to happen in the future, yeah, right? Yeah, or like absolutely. what's going to go down. Yeah. So yeah, think of it as like little short-term sprints as well cool. too. Sometimes that helps people to just really focus on one thing for yeah. a short period of time. I love it. Um, Matt asks again, are you selling directly to consumer or indirectly through parents? Yes. I So I would say 95% of the people that are currently buying my courses or mini courses are parents. Okay. Yep. I have had a couple college girls or right out of college cool. girls buy the course. I wouldn't say that's the norm. Yeah. And I never expected that to be the norm either because when I put myself in the shoes of a girl who's in high school or college, yeah. you number one, don't have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, totally. And number two, you may not be at the age where you would spend that money on investing in yourself, right? right. If you're going to spend that money, you're yeah. like, I'm going to go to Abercrombie or <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm going to go get a smoothie with a friend, a paycheck. I mean, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I usually end up selling it to the parents. And um, I'm also really excited about potential partnerships as yeah. well too. Right. ways I could partner either with like companies to offer this as a benefit to their employees. If yeah. they employ a lot of high school girls, college girls, girls out of college cool. or organizations that have a lot of girls within that organization yeah. to are like nonprofits. So, um, before we take a little, uh, content break here, yeah. just tell us what does, what does it look like in 10 years? Yeah. For you? What does move mm. for money look like? Oh my gosh. Okay. In a dream world, yes. in a dream world, I would love to actually be partnered with multiple organizations. Gotcha. One thing that I have, I have found, um, difficult. Yeah. Um, and maybe like other business owners will relate to this too, <laughs> is sometimes when you're doing the one on one transaction, oh, okay. like the one on one yeah. transaction to each individual parent can sometimes be a challenge and sometimes mm. exhausting where if you partner with like a business or an organization, it's a yeah. bigger transaction gotcha. and there's lots of girls there. Yeah. So in 10 years, I would love to establish yep. some like major key partnerships and maybe some different avenues. If one is, if one is like a nonprofit, maybe one could be like youth groups, Yep. Totally. right? I'm actually going to test out like a three week financial cool. series for youth groups. Yeah, I'm cool. creating it right now. So maybe that's way, I don't know, yeah. maybe homeschool. Yep. Actually homeschool girls can get like a quarter of a credit for taking my yeah. course. Maybe I don't, I don't know, yeah, yeah. but there's all these different routes. So a couple that's key cool. routes. The other thing I would love to see in 10 years is to be able to be partnered with a organization larger than myself, yeah. such as maybe I could be partnered with like, uh, so Charles Schwab. Okay. They are huge on financial literacy for women. That's awesome. Like how cool could that be yes. if there was like a partnership or a merger or an acquisition where I could help to lead the charge on their um, financial literacy for girls, yeah. this segment of girls, right? Totally. And then Charles Schwab can still do everything else for women. And yep. I could just help to focus on that. Well, in an organization like that would appreciate a target like that yeah too. totally like, because they're they're starting to kind of like get into their own and then yes. well where are they going to start like investing and stuff that's you know? the key yeah. it's all your future clients yeah like these are girls that don't have money right now but totally. these are girls that are going to be the future vps they're the future yep. presidents they're the future yeah. like business owners yeah. you know so totally mm -hmm. all right i'm just going to toss this up real quick sarah this is the free video playbook that is available down in the description i've got a link down there and this is just a digital guide to help you get started with online video content. It's free. Just punch your email in, in there. It, you can download this. And you know what? I'm going to pop this up. Um, look what it covers. Some niche topics in Love. here. Love. So like, you know, even, I don't know if you can see my mouse on here, but <laughs> like yes. the real estate niche, like different niches, niches that we go over in this video playbook 
because that is how important finding your niche is, finding your niche is just targeted, focused content. And so I give some examples in this video playbook and it's free to download. Go download it, use it however you want. I need to find where my mouse is here. My mouse is all over the place. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Found it. So um, the link is in the description and go download that. That is so cool. I love that you created that and that oh, there is different chapters awesome. for Thanks. all those different industries. Yeah. You even you even had beauty in there. So what is even so interesting about that is a couple of months ago, I had a woman reach out to me because she's creating a video course yeah, for women who just graduated from videos oh, from beauty school. Yeah, yeah, cool. And now they're just starting their own business because oh, they're all business owners too, Absolutely. right? Totally. They're all business owners and they yeah. all have to market themselves. Yes. And so yeah. that is her little niche, yeah, right? Totally. That's so cool that you did that. I and that, and that's, that's one of the things is like whatever, you know, the video lab is kind of encompassing. Mm hmm but also it can be very targeted to like helping you find maybe who your people are, who, yeah. <laughs> who your audience is, who your viewer is, um, and just make that content. Not, not everybody can afford the production piece of it, right? right? So if you have a phone, you have video production, right? you know? And so it's yeah. just a matter of um, getting it out and start, start making that content and, you know, finding that audience, right? Yeah. Finding that, that groove and like so. what you had to is like real estate what you have to do when it comes to creating video for real estate is so different than fitness it's so right. different than beauty it's yes. so different than personal finance yeah. so i think it's so cool really tailored awesome. it down awesome well i appreciate that little plug yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right let's um keep going with this conversation about um niche niche i saw this quote and i wanted your take on it mm -hmm. i think this I don't know. This was, um, I think it's great, first of all, this quote. But it says, um, content that appeals to everyone strikes a chord with no one. So, like, let me repeat that. Content that appeals to everyone strikes a chord with no one. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that is very true, especially, like, if you think about it from a business standpoint. Yeah. So, even years ago when i was starting out my consulting business and i was going to be focused on social media ads yep. one of my mentors is like okay but sarah who are you going to provide social media ads right. for because there's a lot of people out there that need social media ads and if you try to do social media ads for everybody you're going to be like stretched so thin you're going to be overwhelmed like mm -hmm. and are you actually going to be able to like specifically help people yeah you should try to be like the expert or focus on a couple key things, whether it's social media ads for boutiques right. or tech startups yep. or e-commerce or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So I do agree with that, especially from a business standpoint. Um, and I mean, in the end, like what we talked about earlier, you can always broaden out. Totally. Too. Because totally. if you think about it, Nike started as a running shoe, <laughs> yeah. long distance running yep. shoe, yeah, right? True. Now like they do everything now. Uh, great movie on Amazon Prime called air about yes kind of that story. oh that movie is so yes. amazing it's it blows great. your mind yes, it's great. i'm wearing jordan's right now so <laughs> <Nice>. hello <laughs> yeah. love it um the other thing too is you know amazon yeah. they started with just books yeah right, right? so you yep. can start one place and then you can always expand totally. out from there yeah. like find your key audience and then you can add on and just test things out yeah. not everything is going to work everything's a test one of the things that stuck out to me what you just said is like becoming the expert and and i think that's what niching down does is like it is almost establishes almost establishes you as an expert in this thing that yeah. people are going to keep coming back to right right mm -hmm. um how tell us a little bit about how you've experienced that just with like move for money and yeah well the reason so the reason too why i didn't want to focus on women yes. in general right. that's another question i get is like you know also women need to know this yeah so the thing is is i definitely am not an expert in knowing what is the stock market doing right mm. now at this moment what is international markets mm. doing what is the right move you should do with your 401k like yeah. <laughs> these are kind of a lot of like topics and ideas you talk about when you get a little bit older right, right? Yep. i wanted to be able to speak to girls more at like the basics and like a level like yeah. 2.0 yeah um, and that's also kind of more my key passions is I didn't want to like get way down into the mud, having yeah. to know all these things about personal finance um, that aren't also passionate to me because right. then that's what sucks the energy out of it. Totally. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Now the, um, I feel like with becoming that expert, becoming, um, niching down, finding you right, finding that focus, 
I feel like with content, it opens up so many other doors. And this is where, you know, you might have seen the title to this video and you'd be like, oh, that's just clickbait. But really, it's not. I mean, the title is, you know, this genius video strategy <laughs> will make you more money. Mm -hmm. And this is where that comes in now. Yeah. It's like you have your your audience focus, specific person. This is, this is kind of how I like to talk um, talk about it when it comes to like that clarity and stuff. Like who would you want to sit down? Who's the person you'd want to sit down, have a coffee with, and you could just like just almost word vomit everything yes. <laughs> about what you're – what your industry is or, or anything like that. Yeah. But then that's where the money comes in because now it's like, it leads to all these other opportunities, courses, right? Yeah. Communities, all those things. Now you're the expert. Right. And if you think about it too, in different times of your life, we're all seeking certain things to help us get through stages. Yeah. So for example, when um, I became pregnant with our first, mm -hmm. one of my friends gifted me an online course oh, about yeah. sleep training. Oh yeah. Nice. And it was spe specifically for new moms with yeah. who have ba babies ages zero to four months. Okay. How niche is that, yeah, right? Totally. That gift changed my life <laughs> to the point where I give all of my friends that gift. That's awesome. So I am a, I am a, like a, a consumer of her 10 times over. Yeah. And then the other thing too is now, you know, your baby turns six months. They need to start eating solid food. Right. As a new mom, you're like, I have no idea what, what I'm yeah. doing here. I took an online course yes. about how to start feeding your child solid food. So that company only focuses on moms mm -hmm. with babies ages like four to seven months old just with feeding their food. And they have a super successful business. Yeah. So you could also think too of like stages in people's life. Yes. Right? Right. Where maybe they're going to need some guidance or some help or something. Maybe you work with like brand new business mm. owners. Right. These people have a passion. A lot of them don't know a lot of stuff. We've all been there, <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. You're like, you're like, yeah. I like have no idea what I'm yeah, doing I'm here. I'm all over the place. So maybe you can help them with bookkeeping. Yeah. Maybe you can help them with organization. Maybe you can help them with video content, like yep. whatever it yep. is, you know. But also, yeah, helping people in certain stages of their life can also help you find yeah. what your niche is too. Yeah. And it's like so constant. Concentrated. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. you said, zero to four months. Like, yes. So concentrated. So concentrated. And everything's in one place. Yep. Like, that's that's the key. Everything is now in one place. Yes. Where they, parents don't have to, new parents don't have to go scour the internet to find this information or read all these different yeah. books. Like, it's all there. And what's hard too is like when you scour the internet for, for information, how much of it does it, uh, like, it's like, hypocritical of itself. Yeah. Right. right? Totally. Everybody starts to believe different things. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I don't know who to trust now. Totally. Right. Yeah. So if you can find like one trusted, like key source in that <laughs> season, season of your life, yeah. who you feel like you're, they're speaking to you also because right. you are their niche. Like when I took that course for sleep, like sleep training my baby, I yeah. was like, this woman is speaking to me. Yeah. Like she knows what I'm going through. Yeah. Totally. It's because she's really niched down on her business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. The, um, Let's see. How do I put this? Um, <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit more about like the coursework that you're going to do you update it like regularly or is it just like always just always the same or like how does it how does it work in your world? Totally. Yeah. I update it regularly. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet. Yep. Is it yep. kind of like a community based or is it more like you don't have to get into super specific details, but is it more community based or is it like you purchase this course, then you purchase that course or like, how does that work? Yeah. So right now there's kind of two key ways that um, girls can interact with the move her money courses. Okay. So one is I do have a robust course. I almost yeah. call it like my mega course. So gotcha. this is like everything from A to Z. I created one for girls more in the high school range. Okay. And then I created one for girls more in the college cool. range. Yeah. So yeah, this will teach you everything. Yeah. And then I've also broke down those courses into smaller mini courses. Yeah. So that way, if a girl or if her parent is like, my daughter really just needs to know about budgeting. Yeah. She just needs to know about building wealth. She just needs to know about debt. Gotcha. They can purchase those mini courses gotcha. well too yeah. that just focus on the one key topic. Okay. And then yeah, when a girl gets access to the course. Um, it's on like her phone. It's on her laptop. It's on her yeah. tablet. She can access it like whenever she wants, which is also helpful for a girl yeah. too, because like, especially with what I found is with COVID and a lot of girls already had to go to video-based learning. Yep. And a lot of girls are already taking college courses mm. that are online. They're used to being able to totally. consume content this way and learn yeah. this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, do you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't want to give like too many details away, you know, but like how, how, um, has it provided other opportunities? Like, 
obviously you're on the Video Lab live show, which right, is, right, um, which is a huge deal, by Woo! the way. <laughs> but has that provided other opportunities to like get out, like speak in front of people, yeah. or like, um, you know, go on other podcasts? Like, what does that look like now that you're kind of like almost an expert in this? industry. Yeah. What does that look like now? It definitely has. Yeah. And honestly, like, I just love the opportunity. Yeah. I like, you know, I'm like a early, like hungry <laughs> entrepreneur. So yeah. I'm like, you give me a place to speak about <laughs> yeah. this. I will so happily right. speak about this. Awesome. I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. So, um, I'm always saying yes to these opportunities because yeah. I'm just so honored. Um, it definitely has provided some really cool places to be able to go either speak so about cool. money or speak to yeah. girls whether it's like in a, in a ministry base yeah, right. um, or also in South Dakota in a month, there's a big homeschool conference going on at the cool. convention center. Yeah. And they they asked me to lead a workshop there. Oh, that's awesome. So to lead a workshop for parents on like key yeah. ways they can help their child learn about money. Yeah. I'm like, that is cool yeah, absolutely. to be in a room of all these parents that are like, man, I really want my kid to learn the right way. What are right. some ways I can help as a parent? So. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Now, you know, as we kind of start wrapping up here, Tell us a little bit more as far as the niche goes. Like what, I mean, let's just go into your one thing, okay. okay? So this is like, if you don't get anything else from this entire episode, this one thing is something that you're gonna wanna take away if you're watching this. Mm -hmm. What's your one thing that you wanna say? My one thing is something that a mentor taught me years ago and he said the riches are in the niches. Yeah. So even okay. prior to move her money, I was creating videos once a week yep. and it was mainly geared towards women. And I would talk a lot about faith. So yeah. women, women and faith, how broad are those two topics? <laughs> right. Super Covers duper, a lot. <laughs> super duper, duper, duper broad. Yeah. And so he was like, Sarah, the riches are in the niches. Mm. So I've always been mm. trying to think and focus on how can I really niche down to make sure I'm speaking correctly to the right person. Right. I was actually listening to a YouTube video this morning. And one of the things that the woman said is she was talking more to like influencers and content creators, yeah. but she's like, so many people want to be in the lifestyle category. Yep. She's like, that's like the worst category to be in. That covers a lot of stuff. Everything. Yeah. It's like parenting, fashion, yeah. makeup, your home, traveling, like so much. Yeah. So she's like, if you want to be an influencer or content creator, mm. do not start in the lifestyle category. Interesting. You have to start somewhere else. Yeah. I even have some friends who live in Orange County and they're travel influencers. Okay. And when they became travel influencers, they actually sold everything they owned. They wow. used to live in New York City and they moved to Bali. Wow. So they lived there for a couple of years and then COVID happened. Yep. So it shut everything down. Totally. So they quick moved back to the <laughs> States, like right in time. <laughs> and they settled in, in Orange County. Okay. So prior, they didn't really know exactly what kind of travel influencer. They would travel to all these cool places and basically take pictures. Yeah. Right now, they have really niched down on luxury resorts. Oh, so they were like, how cool is that? Yeah, I'm like, totally, I, that should totally. be my niche. Yeah. So Where they will sign up. Right. So they <laughs> focus on like four seasons, St. Regis. That is their niche. Wow. They don't focus on like family friendly resorts. Yeah. They don't focus on the top 10 attractions in New York City. Totally. It is luxury, yeah. you know, and they have made an amazing business from it. Wow. It took them years to figure yeah, out their totally. niche. Sometimes it does. It took me years to figure out mine too. Yeah. So, and, and that's the thing now, like when people are searching for that luxury, yes. you know, resort resort, well, whose content is going to pop up. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And they also have a ton of clientele with the luxury resorts themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So they're getting paid by Four Seasons. They're yep. getting paid by the St. Regis to come fly to their resort, capture their resort on video yeah. within photos as well too. Yeah. So, um, Daryl says, great one thing. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. Which is in the niches. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, and I, I've noticed that too, with just my own content, just like a personal story too, just talking mm -hmm. about these cameras, right? Like, well, it's led to opportunities to like brand deals, right? Then yeah. it's led to like traveling in December. We, um, my family and I, Panasonic paid for us to go to, or paid for me to go to Japan, right? Wow, so cool. it's like just opportunities like that. If you were like very get focused, right? Yeah. It's like, the riches are in the Yes, niches. you <laughs> do like, a great job at that. Like oh, focusing that. on the video cameras that you use. I think that that is so smart to do because you know the exact community you want to talk to. Right. You know their pain points. Yeah, You can help to handle their pain points. You can yeah. show them the new features and you know exactly what your brand and, is. And that's that's a huge piece of that is mm -hmm. like, you know the pain points. Like yeah. as, you, as you discover who that audience is, like you know them in 
and out, right? Yeah. Like the back of your hand. Like that's where the niche comes in. It's like, you know who you're talking to, you know who it is, the ins and outs, their pain points, yeah. like how to get solutions for them. Like that, that is what the niche is. Totally. <laughs> like yes. Any, any of those things that you can answer. So yeah, that's fantastic. Great one thing, as Daryl said. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Well, Sarah, this has been a great conversation. Do you have any anything else that you that we didn't talk about that you'd want to bring up? I mean, totally fine if you don't, but yeah. I mean, we have a few more minutes here that we can keep talking. Yeah. But. Maybe it's just to like encourage people to, you know how I said it took me years to find yeah. my niche. Yeah. So sometimes it can be like really hard and you just have to work through the process. Totally. I think sometimes as a business owner, it's really easy to get discouraged, yeah. right? Discouragement right. can be like our number one enemy totally. in comparison. Yeah. We compare ourselves to how other people are succeeding in their business mm -hmm. or what they're doing or the brand deals they're getting. Yeah. Um. So I think that it's just like in like just to be patient with yourself yeah. and to celebrate the small wins. Because even with me, like, you know, like finding my niche and creating a whole course, that was like a big undertaking. Yeah. I right. also did it with two little kids at home and like no <laughs> child care. So I was oh, like, geez. holy smoke gaze. Yeah, right? right. So, but I think like what I did incorrectly is I didn't celebrate that accomplishment enough. Oh, yeah. And I let like more discouragement enter oh, my world of like, well, more people should be buying this, that's you know? Yeah. And my husband had to be the one where he's like, yeah. do you not see what you built? Like, do yeah. you not see even what you're doing? Right. And I'm like, no, not really. Yeah. So I think like just like as as a business owner, just be cautious of that. Love that. Yeah, yeah. We get discouraged a lot, but we can't little, let it ruin us. Little yeah. milestones, little celebrations. Totally. It's, you know what? It's okay to like celebrate. What you got a hundred views on a video? Amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. if you look at it, like that's a full room of people. Yes. <laughs> you know hundred I mean? percent. Like if you get thousand views, like that's a a very large room of people yes. that are consuming your content. Also, you just did the dang thing. Like you totally. put yourself out yeah. there and you did it. The majority of people don't do it. 100%. Or they just wish about it or think about it and yeah. they don't do it. So you were brave enough to do that. And, like that's massive. And you know, with the video lab, that's one of the things that I get a lot is like um, people, they just haven't started yet. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> that's know? okay. When, like yeah. somebody just takes a little bit. But... Yeah, totally. When it comes to, I mean, you know, I tell people like, it's probably going to take like 50 to a hundred videos before mm -hmm. you are like fully comfortable yes, in front of the camera. Totally agree. Um, you know, I think the other thing too, is if there's anyone listening that wants to create an online course or even just like start a new business, yeah. one thing that I wish I would have done with move her money is I kind of created this course quietly. Mm. And then when it was close to being live was when yeah. I started like talking about it and promoting yeah. it. Yeah. And some of it is because I had limited time. I could only focus totally. on one thing. And like, I got to focus on the course. Looking back, I wish I would have done more exposure, yeah. more marketing, more social media around it. Because then as I, as the course was almost done and I started looking into launching it, which launching a product is like a whole nother yeah. realm, oh, yeah, right? Totally it's like is. so much That's work. That's another episode. <laughs> that is another like 10 episodes. There's so much work. But a lot of what they said is they were like, don't build your product first and then mm, launch it. Yeah. They were like, test things out on social media. And I was yeah. like, I did this totally backwards, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So if I could go back in time, that's what I wish I would have done. I wish I would have just started creating short reels and TikTok videos mm, from the beginning, right. building up an audience, getting feedback before I built the course. Yeah. So anyone out there who's <laughs> looking at doing that, just start talking about it first. Yeah. No, that's and great. And then build it at the same time. <laughs> and, and, you know, and there's power in that for like free information, too, yes. you know, and that's that builds a lot of trust, right? That builds a lot of trust where now people might be more willing to give you some money for that. Actual totally. Product. Totally. <laughs> you <know>? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Sarah, this has been such a great conversation. Thanks so much for yeah. being on the episode. Thank you for having me yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just going to take you off camera real quick okay. and then I'm going to wrap up. And But don't go anywhere because we'll chat after this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Sarah. And thanks, everyone, for those of you who jumped into the chat, brought some questions and comments. I do appreciate that. Um, next week, I've got um, Mariah Bruns on from Fresh Farm Content and we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about kind of the mindset having the right mindset when it comes to creating online video content so that's going to be an episode that you're not going to want to miss and we're going to have a great conversation around that again make sure you uh hit those links down in the description um follow the video lab socials i've got free downloads there video playbook um in the lab newsletter every saturday i've got a newsletter that goes out um of 
videos and articles from around the web that just help you gain knowledge, skills, and confidence when it comes to online video content. Um, all those things are free. Um, if you're interested in YouTube, I have a free online YouTube workshop. The link is down in the description. Go check those out. This has been a great episode. I'm excited to get these reels cut together and put out. And this video is always going to live on whatever platform you're watching on right now. It's always going to live on this platform. So you can come back, reference it anytime. And again, follow the socials because all of those reels from this episode are going to be coming out on that as well. So again, thanks, Sarah, for being on here. Thanks for jumping into the chat. And the chat's always active too. If you want, the comments are always active too. If you want to keep this conversation going. So I hope you have a great solar eclipse Monday. And I don't know, it might actually be over by now. I'm not totally sure, but have a great solar eclipse Monday. And we'll see you next week on the video.